drag. It's everywhere. It's all of us. We're all born naked and the rest is drag. Hi, I'm Ben Wambecki, actor, model, philanthropist, and flaming homosexual. <laughs> huh. I'm also a huge fan of drag. Drag is great. It's dramatic. It's glamorous. It's controversial. It's theatrical. Oh, you caught me. <laughs> From the beginning, drag and theater have been linked. Of course, in ancient Greece, it wasn't what we understand drag to be today. Theater was a highly respected art form and cross-dressing was exclusionary, done in order to tell stories featuring women without actually letting them engage in the art. However, in 17th century Japan, kabuki started as a female-only discipline, with women playing all genders. Then, in 1629, women were banned from performing kabuki, and all male troops were formed. When a man plays a woman in kabuki, it is called anagata. In opera, a character played by a performer of the opposite sex was called a travesti, and specifically, when a woman played a man, it was called a breacher's role. In Spanish Comedia, female crossdressers were extremely popular until they were banned. In British pantomime, the role of the pantomime dame, a man playing a middle-aged woman for comedic relief, was and remains a mainstay. But look, I have to tell you, we're terribly poor. Aww. Oh, come on. We're poorer than that? Yeah. And everyone knows Shakespeare was a boys' club. Lady Macbeth, Juliet, Ophelia, all men. While this was done as a means to keep social status, Shakespeare experimented with gender identity and cross-dressing as plot points in many of his plays. I left no ring with her. What means this lady? Fortune forbid my outside have not charmed her. <laughs> she made good view of me. Indeed, so much that, sure, methought, her eyes had lost her tongue, for she did speak in starts distractedly. She loves me, sure. The cunning of her passion <laughs> invites me in this churlish messenger. None of my lord's rings, why, he sent her none. I am the man. <sighs> if it be so, as tis, poor lady, she had Better love a dream. Thank you, doll. In the 1880s, former slave William Dorsey Swan became the first person in American history to ever call themselves a queen of drag. While the word drag doesn't have a clear origin, it may have had to do with how the intricate ball gowns worn by performers like Swan dragged on the ground. Swan and his partner, Pierce Lafayette, hosted drag balls, or drag queen pageants. This led to drag pageants and the underground African-American and Latino-based ballroom culture, which led to the drag queen house system a system of performers who teach and support other performers and call themselves part of the same family. It was the foundations of American drag. Thus, on the backs of black and queer artists, drag culture was formed. While ball culture was getting popular in the early 1900s, so too was drag in American entertainment. Drag was making its way into vaudeville with performers like Gladys Bentley, Julian Eltinge and Bothwell Brown, and all too unfortunately into minstrelsy, where it was used to further the mammy stereotype and demean black women. By the time we get to the 1950s, 
what we understand to be the musical, had been established. For the most part, these musicals rarely featured cross-dressing and never drag as it had come to have been known through ballroom culture. An exception, however, might be made for the character of Peter Pan, both in the play and the musical, who is expected to be played by a female performer in what we would now consider to be a drag king role. I know a place where dreams are born and time is never planned. It's not on any chart. You must find it with your heart. Never, never land. It might be miles beyond the moon or right there where you stand. Just keep an open mind and then suddenly you'll find Never, never land. While drag grew as an underground phenomenon in queer scenes, the use of it in theater, aside from a quick laugh, did not. Queer characters existed in straight plays, which were often able to get away with edgier themes, even if they were controversial. Musicals at the time had a much harder time incorporating queer themes. Musicals, after all, were what tourists loved to see and radios loved to play. Plots and characters during this era of musical theater were very sanitized and explicitly heterosexual. Then, on June 28th, 1969, Stonewall. At 1.20 a.m., New York police officers raided the Stonewall Inn bar, which catered to gay patrons. The gay community, led by drag queens and individuals we would now understand today to be transgender, had had enough. They fought back against the police, and riots lasted for several days. From this moment on, the fight for queer rights became an increasingly popular, organized movement. So too did queer characters in musicals. Coco, Applause, A Chorus Line, and Boy Meets Boy all had gay characters in various roles. Did this come as a big surprise to you? I guess. Yeah. It was the moment I realized I was gay. Strauss and Lerner's Dance a Little Closer was Broadway's first gay musical, but closed on opening night. By far the crown jewel into this new frontier in queer characters happened in 1983 with Jerry Herman's La Cage Aw Fools. The story of a gay couple dealing with homophobic in-laws, this show also featured the first drag queen character in a musical, and the song I Am What I Am became an anthem for the queer rights movement. I am what I am, I don't want praise, I don't want pity. I bang my own drum. Some think it's noise. I think it's pretty. And so what? If I love each feather and each spangle, why not try to see things from a different angle? Your life is a sham till you can shout out loud, I am what I am. I am what I am, and what I am needs no excuses. I deal my own deck, sometimes the ace, sometimes the deuces. And there's no return and no deposit. One life. So it's time to open up your closet. Life's not worth a damn till you can shout out loud. I am what I am.
The late 80s and 90s saw theater as a powerful tool to address the actual reality of the AIDS crisis, which was at large being ignored by the general public. Shows like March of the Falsettos and Rent used queer and drag characters to give a face to the crisis. Lots of great drag queens, performers, and gay theater artists were lost during this period. People like Howard Ashman, who based his character of Ursula in Disney's The Little Mermaid off of Drag Queen Divine, or drag queen Hibiscus, who founded the gay liberation theater collective called The Cockettes, were lost to the virus. The loss was felt throughout the queer, drag, and theater communities. What beautiful things they might have been able to create had their government not failed their most vulnerable community at their time of greatest need. I never knew when I dreamed of holding all those men that there would be so little time for that embrace and that desire would end in such a way I never knew. I think they meant it when they said you can't buy love. Now I know you can rent it. A new lease, you were my love, my life, oh my life. I've longed to discover something as true as this is. So with a thousand sweet kisses, I'll cover you if your heart has expired. Following the AIDS crisis and the gay liberation movement, suddenly our stories were more visible than ever. Writers were exploring complex sexualities, gender identity, and wonderful gender fuckery with their new characters. In musicals like Rent and Hedwig and the Angry Inch, drag queen characters were expounded upon in order to introduce complicated and progressive ideas of gender expression and identity to modern audiences. On nights like this When the world's a bit amiss And the lights go down Across the trailer park I get down I feel sad Feel on the verge of going mad And then it's time to punch the clock I put on some makeup Turn up the tape deck And pull the wig right off the shelf Suddenly I'm Miss Midwest Midnight Checkout Queen And then I wake up And I turn back to myself
Some girls, they have a natural ease They wear it any way they please With their French flipped curls and perfumed magazines Wear it up, let it down This is the best way that I've found To be the best you've ever seen I put on some makeup Turn on the tape deck I'm pulling the wig down from the shelf Suddenly I'm this punk rock star of stage and screen And I ain't never In 2014, Kinky Boots won the Tony Award for Best Musical. Drag today is understood to be an expression in gender identity rather than cross-dressing for the sole sake of making fun of women. Although with musicals like Tootsie and Mrs. Doubtfire, Broadway has come under critique lately for tired tropes. Side note people, the point of a drag queen is that she's a funny woman, not that he's a funny man for wearing a dress. Now, drag characters are a celebration of full queer lives and wonderful, beautiful, messy experiences. Ups and downs, highs and lows, drag queens are now a mainstay in musicals. The world wants us, and the feeling is mutual. Why am I even here? Can I just disappear? Cause ugly is the only thing that's true now And ugly poisons everything I do now And shit and shame and ugliness is who I am Is who Feed your fire to take you higher We'll light you up like a live wire Celebrate you to elevate you When you struggle to stand We'll take a helping hand When you hit the dust Let me raise you up When your bubble busts Let me raise you up When your glitter rusts Let me raise you up No Whoa, when you hit the dust, let me raise you up When your bubble busts, let me raise you up If your glitter rusts, let me raise you up And oh, oh, I'll just be Raise you up Whoa. Never let them tell you who you ought to be Just be with dignity Never let them tell you who you want to be You'll see, you'll see Just be, just be Thank you for joining me tonight Here's the credits <laughs> Hi.
Hi everyone, my name is Jackie Rosebutch and I have the wonderful privilege of being Ben's drag parent and I am also a drag performer here in the state of Montana. I just quickly wanted to say thank you so much for watching this amazing film and also bring to your attention a little bit of the anti-queer legislation that's going on in the state of Montana and really across the country. This legislation especially targets trans people and drag performers. And there's a lot going on, but there's also a lot of things that you can do. First, research the different bills that are happening in your state, especially if you live in a red state. And then testify against those bills. Send calls, send letters to your representatives, and show up. Show up for queer people and be an ally for trans people and drag performers alike. Thank you so much for watching this film, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.